All right, here we have an article from the National Post. Rahim Mohammed, Danielle Smith's Alberta Sovereignty Act. Pretty awkward for the RCMP. So there's a couple of things. One, in reading this here after months of speculation, Alberta Sovereignty within a United Canada Act, Bill 1, was finally unveiled. Basically, it, uh, it sounds like, and again, I'm no lawyer, but it sounds as though uh, Premier Danielle Smith is introducing this Bill 1, which will say that when Justin Trudeau uh, has, the, um, has the edict come down, that uh, government that the police are supposed to gather up the uh, guns from people in the citizenry. There's over 1,500 types of guns that are listed. Then she is saying that the order will be from the province of Alberta for the RCMP and all police within the jurisdiction to ignore that order and to abide by the dictates of Alberta to allow people to have those guns. So there's a couple things here. One, when we read through this here, I always find it interesting when I read news articles and either they have not been edited, or I should say they've not been edited well, or they're, uh, they're edited and it clearly still shows the bias. So as we read through this article, uh, for Trudeau taking a public stand against assault weapons and Smith would be a vote winner in the perennial electoral battleground of Southern Ontario, especially with homicide rates trending upwards. And of course, taking away guns from law abiding citizens is going to stop the homicide rates because all those people who legally own guns and care about the law, they're all the ones out there committing the homicides, right? It's not the criminals. It's not people who have a disrespect for the law and human life. No, no, no. It's the people who go through and they get themselves all registered and they go through the hoops and everything else to, to buy a legitimate gun. No homicide was ever committed by somebody with an illegal gun or something other than a gun. But when we scroll down, we find a part here where it says, it's talking about how, oh, it could be a win-win for Trudeau and for uh, her, for Smith. Uh, here you go. So she's already unveiled a plan to replace the RCMP with a provincial police force, but has had difficulty building public support for the initiative, which will cost Alberta taxpayers an additional $235 million per year, plus $366 million in startup costs. Now, I am all for freaking replacing the RCMP. I have had huge issues with the RCMP. Uh, I think that the way they behaved throughout the uh, pandemic, scamdemic, whatever you want to call it, was terrible. It showed they had a total disregard for their oath. They didn't care about the Charter of Rights and Freedoms at all. And they basically just are government lackeys. They can be jackbooted thugs who will be uh, more than happy to be the bullet that is aimed by the uh, governmental gun. And I lost a tremendous amount of respect for them over the past two and a half years. Uh, throughout pretty much the vast majority of my life, I was an extreme supporter of the police. And uh, in the last two and a half years has completely eroded my faith in them. So if they want to get rid of the RCMP, I'm all for them. But here, you know, here he goes. Now he said, oh, it could be a win-win for her. And then he details some of the stuff about why it would be a win for her. But here we go. Here's another part of what I have an issue with. None of this is to say that Smith is playing some sort of elaborate four, game of 4D chess with the RCMP. Frankly, I'm not even sure she knows what she's having for breakfast tomorrow morning. Okay? Smith, who as the lines Jen Gerson has pointed out is one of Canada's luckiest politicians, has nevertheless been, given, been handed yet another gift with Trudeau's overreaching gun buyback program and could use it to kill two birds with one stone. So this whole thing here is basically just saying, I don't like her. I think she's a big doo-doo head, okay? That's what this whole paragraph is. That should be freaking omitted, okay? What does that add to the article? It adds nothing except it shows us what this person's bias is. So as I'm reading through this, I have my sort of thoughts about who's writing it, but then I get to this paragraph here and I say, aha, I know where they're coming from. And then sure enough, we scroll down here and it says, uh, National Post, Rahim Muhammad is a master's student at the University of Calgary, aha, uh -huh. so he's part of the higher education program. And I will say this, nothing has destroyed my respect for, the, uh, for higher education than when I actually went back to university and saw how terrible higher education is. 
But then we read through, oh, it's School of Public Policy. His writing has appeared in The Line, The Hub, and CBC News Calgary. Great. So this person here is a government-paid lackey, okay? This person here is obviously on the government side. And we can see that in the way that this is written. So when I see things that are written like this, and we see things that have clear personal bias, I go, great. I know where this person is coming from, and clearly they're not trying to present an unbiased fashion. They're trying to color it. So he could just leave this story and talk about the, the bill and its effects and how it's going to be complicated between the RCMP and the federal government because the RCMP is a federal government organization and the province, which is now trying to have the uh, federal government or the RCMP abide by, fed by provincial dictates. And that could be an interesting article. But note, they have to add something else. So now I'm going to go on to the next phase of this comment. Anytime a government is looking to disarm the population, that population had better be incredibly wary of what that government plans to do in the future. History is replete with... Uh, circumstances wherein a government has disarmed the population and then following that either certain people or certain groups of people have been amazingly poorly treated and by that I mean killed in vast numbers uh, for simply disagreeing with the government's policies or mandates or ideology. As a uh, as an example, we're going to go to this page here, and here's just a few of these, okay? Here's just a few of these, and this only covers the, like, 1900s, so this, and this isn't even all of them, okay? But this goes back through centuries and centuries and centuries, okay? So here we have Turkey, citizens disarmed, Russia, citizens disarmed, China, disarmed. Between those, over 40 million people from those three alone. We have Germany, we have Cambodia, again, all those intellectuals, quote, killed, Guatemala, Uganda, there's freaking tons of these, okay? A, pop, a population that is well-armed and eager to maintain its freedom is far, far, far more difficult to act tyrannical upon than a country that is disarmed. And people would always do best to remember that as the case. <laughs>